In this video, we'll learn about the operation of the PN junction with an applied voltage. Recall that when left open circuited at its two terminals, the PN junction will arrive at a steady state where there's a depletion region formed at the interface between the PN and type materials where net positive and fixed net positive and negative charge give rise to an electric field setting up a built-in potential voltage v0 that built-in voltage opposes uh, diffusion currents and reduces the diffusion current from p to n and n to p to a level exactly equal to the drift current is that flows because of thermally generated charge carriers being swept across the depletion region by the electric field. So in this steady state, we've got zero net current flowing. Next, consider the case where a reverse bias voltage, VR, is applied. That is, the N terminal is connected to higher potential than the P terminal. With this polarity, the reverse bias voltage, VR, reinforces the built-in potential and further opposes diffusion currents. Diffusion currents decrease rapidly as VR increases and very quickly become almost zero. Thus, the only current that remains is the relatively small drift current, IS, that flows from the N terminal to the P terminal of the PN junction. This current is a very strong function of temperature and again is a relatively weak function of the reverse voltage applied once the reverse voltage is modest in value. The precise relationship between the reverse current IS and the properties of the diode are captured in this expression here. But in summary, a relatively constant reverse current IS flows when a PN junction is subjected to a reverse bias voltage VR. Next, let's consider what happens with the forward bias applied across the PN junction? That is, with the voltage VF applied with the polarity shown, higher potential on the P side, lower potential on the N side. Doing so subtracts off from the built-in potential of the PN junction. As a result, the barrier to diffusion currents, that is, of excess holes from the P side to the N side, and free electrons from the N side to the P side, that those diffusion currents both increase exponentially with the applied forward bias voltage VF. Under this circumstance, we get carrier concentration profiles like the ones shown here. So looking at this plot on the y-axis, we're looking at the concentration of charge carriers on each side of the PN junction, plotted versus position along the junction. The junction itself between P, the interface between P and N type semiconductor arises at a position X equals zero, shown here. So with the forward voltage applied, there will be an increase in the holes diffusing from the P side to the N side. Once those holes had arrived at the N side part of the depletion region, they are minority carriers. So we have this excess concentration of minority charge carriers above and beyond what we would expect its steady state value to be. These then continue to diffuse from areas of high concentration right here at position Xn at the start of the n-type region to areas of lower concentration further away from the junction. Now, as they go, they immediately start recombining with the majority carriers in the n-type region the free electrons. And that's why their concentration decreases. And this gradient in minority charge carrier concentration is what uh, gives rise to the continuous flow of current uh, from left to right in this case. At the same time, free electrons from the N-type material have diffused into the P-type material. This also shows up as a net positive charge from left to right across the PN junction, of course. These electrons, when they arrive in the P-type region, become, again, minority carriers there. They recombine with the majority holes and diffuse away from the junction, from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. Once we're far away from the junction on either side, we've got 
um, concentration levels pretty close to their uh, expected steady state thermal equilibrium values that depend on the dopant concentrations on each side of the junction. However, all of the electrons and holes that have been recombining within the p-n junction have to be replenished. And they are replenished by current flowing from the forward bias voltage source, Vf. So in summary, with a forward voltage applied, the diffusion current increases rapidly as a function of Vf, and you get a large forward current flowing in the diode. Here's a plot of the IV characteristic of the PN junction. So you see that with reverse voltage applied, we've got a small reverse current IS flowing. With forward voltage applied, the forward current increases rapidly. Overall, the IV characteristic is very accurately modeled by this exponential relationship between current and forward voltage applied. Showing up in the exponent is the thermal voltage VT, which is a value of approximately 25 millivolts at room temperature. In addition to its operation with forward and reverse bias, it's also important to note that PN junctions can exhibit reverse breakdown not captured by the exponential IV characteristic presented on the last slide. Reverse breakdown arises at large reverse voltages where you can see a large reverse current showing up. There are two physical mechanisms that can give rise to reverse breakdown in PN junctions. One is the Zener effect. With such large reverse bias voltages in place, there will obviously be a relatively strong electric field showing up in the depletion region of the PN junction. The Zener effect arises when the electric field there is strong enough to separate electron hole pairs in the depletion regions. The resulting electron hole pairs are immediately swept to the terminals of the PN junction and show up as a reverse current. Junctions can be engineered to exhibit the Zener effect at practically whatever voltage is desired. Typical values may range from 1 to 5 volts, but higher voltages are also common. The other mechanism that gives rise to reverse breakdown is the avalanche effect. In this case, the electric field in the depletion region accelerates minority ca drift carriers that show up there to very high kinetic energy. As they travel through the depletion region, collisions produce additional electron hole pairs. Those additional electron hole pairs are also accelerated by the strong electric field there and further collisions produce more electron hole pairs, and the result is an avalanche effect resulting, again, in a relatively large reverse current arising. The avalanche effect typically occurs at reverse voltages of seven volts or more. So which of these two effects arises first depends on the construction of the diode. Zener effects are often engineered to be useful in producing a fixed reverse volt voltage across the PN junction, whereas the avalanche effect may give rise to overheating and thereby cause the diode to be um, damaged. 